Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Okay, so I had to go pick up a fridge, right? It was a second-hand fridge. Yep. From this appliance store. Got it cheaper. Pretty happy with it. So awesome. I borrowed a mate's truck to go get it. We okay. all need a friend yeah. with a truck. Thanks, punters. Oh, yeah, no, Coops. Oh, it was Coops, Coops. Was it? And, yeah, and Coops. thanks, Coops, because he's pretty flat out with work, but yeah. he said you can have it for a couple of hours. Rock up to the place to pick it up, and I'm not joking, get it in there. It was, it was boxed, right? It was in a box. They put it in a box. But it was just it was it would have been five centimeters too tall, and you can't lay down fridges, Kate, because it ruins fridges because oh, they've got really you, oh, ca- no, you can't even, lay them down. You've got to have that. them standing up. Oh, even Kate okay. knows that. Even I, even I know that. And I'm a lady. What? <laughs> so well, a woman so, anyway. So anyway, then they're like, "Well, we're going to have to take the box up. We're going to have to take off all the wrapping." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh." Then there's a guy, their delivery driver that they use all yeah. the time, goes, where are you going, mate? I said, I'm in Balmain. He goes, well, I just live not far from there. And he goes, I can drop it off there for a couple of hundred bucks. And I said, great, that would be great. If you could do that, that's perfect. Then I can drop this back to my mate and you can deliver it to me and help, it, help me get it into the house. This guy does it. So I then, an hour later, um, he arrives at the house and I, this guy is fascinating. He's in his mid sixties, and he goes, "Oh, oh, okay, you're on this street." He goes, "Mate, I own the two houses down at the end. I've owned them for years." I'm going, "You're kidding me?" <sighs> he goes, "Yeah, I haven't lived in there, but they're investment properties for me, and I rent it out to the the people that live in it mm-hmm. down there." Wow, he's done all right. Fat. He goes, "Mate, so how long have you been in the inner west for?" I said, "Oh, we've been here for 13, 14 years." I, lo- I said, "I love it around here." He said, "Yeah." He goes, "Mate, I could tell you a few stories about this place. <laughs> I grew just, up around here." Just just put my fridge in, mate, if you could. Just, then, yeah, just the fridge. No, yeah. but it, these were fascinating stories. He then continues to tell me stories about Lure- Louisa Road, Road in Birch yep. Grove, which is the, the very expensive road in Birch Grove, and every house is on the water. He starts telling me stories about all these wealthy businessmen who are cheating on their wives. Oh. Kate, and I'm oh, getting well, sucked into... I hope none th- of the wives from Louisa Road. No. <laughs> the, the famous wives of Louisa Road. <laughs> He then tells me that he's got two investment properties on law. And I'm going, Ooh. mate, you're a delivery driver. I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. Mm. He goes, yeah, I blackmailed one because one of them, one of the wealthy businessmen, he hooked up with his sister-in-law. Ah. Right? And I'm going, okay, so he, he then, I got the sister to then bribe him to sell me his house so she wouldn't tell the whole oh, area what on. was going on. Oh, that's how he got into the market. So, so, just the fridge inside, mate. I, I went back inside. I said to BJ, God, this guy's got two places on our street. He's a fascinating guy, making me laugh, telling me all these stories. The next day, I go down the road, and the two houses that he was talking about, there's a guy out the front putting his bin. And I went, mate, I just met your landlord yesterday. He goes, what, my granddad? I go, no, 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 his name's Jim. Jim? He goes, no, 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 he doesn't own the house. My grandfather owns this house and I rent it off him. Oh, Jimbo. This, so then I, 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 I bring back the company that I've bought the fridge from, Kate, and I said, can you tell me more about Jim? Awesome. And they went, okay. Oh, okay. What, what, what? <laughs> they, they, what did hear, he tell you? I could hear people laughing in the background. They said, he is the best delivery driver in the area, but he is known to fabricate his stories. So you're the, telling me the real housewives of Louisa Road aren't cheating? But but he was so serious and he went into so much detail, awesome. Kate, about these stories. And they said he does it all the time. He just loves telling lies to people that he meets. <laughs> well, maybe and it's I- not about telling lies and it's more about he just loves a chat. And he might think that what he does on a day-to-day basis isn't particularly interesting. So I'm going to create this magical world that I don't even know whether it's true or not. But anymore. does he get back? Does he get back to work and go, hey, got fit? It's your beauty. Oh, yeah. He bought every word. You know what? He'll talk about me on the radio. I, but I just couldn't believe it that he just kept telling me, fabricating all these stories. None of them are factual at all. Got, and that's what he does his whole life. He told you the fridge was brand new, yeah? Yeah, yeah and that he lived in the area. And that you could lie the fridge down. He also said, no, I didn't damage it as I was installing it I either. I I didn't. And I own your house. Good on you, Jim. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast.
this story is about a husband and wife. Husband is going off to work and she seems to think that he's living some kind of double life because she's come across text messages in his phone who happen to be with a work colleague who is a woman and there's nothing really untoward to those messages. But there is a, a, um, a somewhat a... Not intimate, but, it, you know... A relationship a, a of some relationship sort? A relationship, and they're it's... friends, and they know each other. You know, like, let's be honest, we all spend a lot of time at work. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, it, it was important, I think, Fitzy, you, yesterday you were talking a, about on air the fact that it's important to create connection with oh, people... Oh, yeah, social. ...in the office, so that when you, you go to fitness. work, you feel safe and, and, you, and you're having a nice time mm-hmm. because you spend a lot of time there. But she's come across messages messages where um, it's not about work stuff. It might be about her child. She's recently divorced, so I guess that may oh, set yeah. off alarm bells because a lot of people don't like divorced or single Rebound. people, you know, hanging around um, their mm-hmm. partner. So that's all I really wanted to ask was like... <laughs> What are they it's doing? Do they get a coffee well, together? He, or? Well, he's saying things like, you're overreacting because it's just a friendship. And do you know what? I, I actually believe that because I have lots of friendships with men. That are hmm? like a, a, No, but, well, you you guys are my yeah. friends. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's no, there is nothing to that. But if you have a... a a partner who doesn't understand that work relationship, I, I think it can feel I've got a mate, uh, threatening. And his wife, if he was to grab a coffee with another girl, that would be enough to cause a real issue within the relationship. If he had a female friend, mm. and maybe she's just sensitive because he's a good-looking rooster and he has a track record. Well, and he's cheated go. on her eight times. No, he's never cheated <laughs> on her. Absolutely not. And they have three kids and they're a beautiful family. And that's the story but, we'll go with. <laughs> but <laughs> if he was to hang out with another girl, let's say his work colleague was a female and they were on road trips or something or working on an assignment, mm. then it would not sit well at home. Can I, can I tell you the best way to approach this and there's nothing wrong if you've got a if you're in a great relationship to go up to your partner and go I don't know I may be overlooking this and, and, and you know I'm looking into this too much and I'm so sorry if I've made you feel like this but I've just seen the text message mm. I don't know what I'm thinking then from there you can test body language and you can see how they react Kate yeah. and it's and you know what if they go oh honey don't be silly I work with her I need to catch mm-hmm. up with her to talk about this um, around work then you know everything's fine I, if you keep this secret and you and it builds yeah. up Kate yeah, this is where it gets worse it's and just worse. he's sitting on the couch with his best shirt on covered in aftershave it's 10 <laughs> o'clock at night and he's heading out for a work meeting <laughs> yeah, a coffee apparently <laughs> but I, I agree Fitzy I do, because I think that if you don't get it out in the open or it's not just part of the dialogue within your relationship. Let's be honest. Most of what you think and you're worrying about, you don't have the facts on and it's probably not the truth. It's what you've made in your own head. You worry about things that you don't even know if they exist and it's always going to be far worse. There are people also that would claim men and women simply can't be friends without one wanting more. That, that's you. That's in your mind, mate. No, it's that's not. That's in your lots mind. Lots of female friends. Yeah, but you, you, you say this all the time. That that it, pe- it's true. A lot of people believe that. Yeah, that, I, I agree. That a lot of men have ulterior motives when they when they become friends with certain females. They do. Naturally, so that she's, you're just being hypocritical because you just said no. They can't. They can't no, be for, friends. For some people, and I, I, like I said, I have a lot of female friends. Uh, some people they can't help themselves, and they'll blame it on natural instinct. But they will simply they're unable to become close to female friends without wanting more. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. You and know, so it's probably best for them not to be in a relationship yeah. or to form female friendships. Yes. Because it's also not fair to yeah. say that you're you just have friendships with the opposite sex yeah. and then right. tell your partner all the time that they're silly and they're crazy and it's all in. I'll their give head. you this one. There's a celebrity. I can't say his name, but he's married. And uh, a girl that I know used to do some work for him. Mm. She received a phone call one day from his wife saying, I'm so sorry, we're going to have to let you go. You can't work with the family anymore. And sometimes we just need to remove females from his life. And you're one of them. 
Oh, that's a because story. Because she's the that's one that has to suffer. It's a true story. So it's more about yeah, managing got, his behaviour. We love you to pieces. You've been fantastic with the family. But unfortunately, sometimes we need to remove women from his life. The dangling carrot. Voice. And you're one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it was a horrible phone call for Lisa to have to make. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Let's talk about this because I think it's a really, really exciting offering and a really good thing to do. Um, the Japanese... The Japanese have come up with a great idea. Mm. They've realised there's been an increase of people suffering heart attacks in Japan. So they've come together and they've said, you know what? Everybody's having a heart attack because they're too stressed in life. Oh, is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. Not to do well, with diet? No, not to work, do with diet. Their working good. hours are a lot different to ours, aren't they? They, they get less holidays. I'm not sure. Um, but what they've come together and said, I think people would be more relaxed if they laughed more. So the po- politicians have passed a bill telling citizens they need to laugh once a day. What? You need to laugh. A law? It is now law, Kate Ritchie, for you to laugh at least once a day. But wouldn't you laugh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. Can I go back to work? But wouldn't you laugh anyway? Do you not think that Japan. not everyone laughs once oh, a day? Or are we just laugh. so lucky? So Which, lucky. You're lucky you get to sit next to me, so you're guaranteed a laugh. But, it, I mean, there's a difference between laughing with and laughing at. You mean doing have your you, job? <laughs> have you ever had a job? Have you ever had a job, and I'm still trying to find one, mm. but have you ever had a job where you haven't enjoyed the job, but you've enjoyed the company around you that make you laugh that you've stayed at the job? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, still nothing. Um, I mean, how many years of entertainment have you done <laughs> since the age of eight? And still nothing. Who was the funniest on set for you, Kate? Like, who would make you laugh the most? Apart Is there one that's... <laughs> Craig McLaughlin. Me. He was very funny. Yeah. yeah. He was, yeah. He was um, very funny. I just thought, if you wouldn't mind, uh, maybe I could come out with a couple of jokes now just to tick it off, especially for the Japanese listeners. Um, <laughs> if they're keen to get involved. Arigato. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. That's oh, not okay. racist, mate. Oh, wow. Just to say a word I'm in not another saying language. Because the origin is from there, it yeah. doesn't mean you're supposed to have to. I'm not saying you're I'm racist. Helping. I was. I just didn't Kawaii. know. Was that was that the joke? No, that's not the joke. Am I meant okay. to be laughing at the jokes? Do I have to laugh? Do I do what I normally it's do good for you to laugh. when we do the show, which yeah. is just laugh regardless? Tommy, I don't know. got I a want, little buzzer on yeah. his ears. Laugh again now. Okay. I want you to laugh if you find the joke funny because a uh, bit of a sad story. My friend um, recently got crushed by a pile of books. Oh, he's only got his shelf to blame. <gasps> Oh, I love these ones. <laughs> go, go so again, go again. What annoys me is when you look at me and smile and go, I love these ones. That means you've held back a laughter. Yeah, yeah. You've held it back and you've chosen Because up. do you know what I think with laughing is... Uh, because I'm look, uh, Jess is actually when I joined this show, Jess said to me, "I'm an easy audience. Like I, I really, I, I kind of give that you, you what are. you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I will yeah. laugh. Very generous crowd. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit front of a people. Front row, Richie. They call you yeah. front row, Richie. Bit of a people pleaser. Yeah. But I think sometimes don't always give the laugh. Hold on to the laugh and let it build within your body because right. it feels amazing. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an interesting way to look at it. My uh, out of context, because I had a friend Sorry. like that and he actually lost lost his left side. He was all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it, I would have probably ended with the first one. Yeah. yeah. I, what's the difference between a, a chickpea and a lentil? I've never had a let... No? Can't do that joke. I don't know that one. What is that one? Oh, no. Okay, I've got one. Okay. What if I just tell my joke? Yeah, go for it, Kate. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> So good. You see, you're already... Hang on a minute. So the only laugh we've had so far is before you've told your joke. Okay, you ready? (laughs) What do you call cheese that you don't own? (laughs) Nacho cheese! Oh, and in the accent. (laughs) So... So... so, Racism. So we've got two two races on the show and no laughs. (laughs) The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We've spoken about running away from home on this show before. I think every kid goes through it. You're just over your rebellious stage in your life. You're off mum and dad. They won't drop you off at footy training early enough and (laughs) then they forget to pick you up. And you know what, dad, he's just a loser. So it's Mm -hmm. time for me to leave, guys. I'm going to take a few things out of the fridge. I've got my backpack and I'll see you in a few weeks. Have a good one. I'll take the Tim Tams and get out of here.
What I want to know is 13, 24, 10, how far did they get running away? This mm. is an unbelievable story of a young bloke called Bren, Ben Christellis, right? He's 15 years of age. Now, Ben Christellis, missing 15-year-old boy, found safe and well after going missing from Scarborough. He's over in WA. Yep. He's gone missing, and the, the article says a 15-year-old boy has been found safe and well. Mother Olivia Hunter took to social media to appeal for the public's help to find her teenage son after Ben said he had not been heard or seen from from last Thursday last week. So they found oh, him, which is so great. Scary. Scary, isn't yeah. it? Well, lucky he's safe. Thing is, though, Ben's run away again, and a video. Again? Yeah, a video. I'm about to show you. This is on Instagram. Oh. Ben's 15 years of age. Ben is over with a few mates in Bali at the moment, <laughs> partying. How old is he? 15. He's 15. Okay. Oh, Ben. Let's have a look at Ben. So right. that's the story there, and that's Is been that in Bali at a at yeah. a nightclub in Bali with a girl and giving the camera a one fingered salute. Well, I don't know. I don't know if he's with it. He's with a few mates though. There's a few people around, and they're at they're at a nightclub. How so, did he get? A, can a fifteen year old buy a ticket to go somewhere? Yeah, I assume so. I don't know. Can you do that? I mean, he hasn't really run away. He's just gone on a holiday without telling anyone. Well, that's running away. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> He looks like he's a lot older. Is he an unaccompanied minor as a 15-year-old? Or can you sneak your way on and say that you're 18? Tommy, you've done a lot of um, sneaking onto aeroplanes. Can you do that at the age of 15? Yeah, can you just question. buy a ticket and go, see you later, guys? Oh, um, by the way, I'll tell Mum when I get there. Yeah, so uh, passengers oh, okay. 12 or above oh, may fine, travel mate. alone. Okay. But I presume that... Well, not yeah. many people are running away to Bali, are they? Yeah. Not many people are leaving Scarborough <laughs> and saying to their mum, I'm just going to grab some milk because I think we're out of it. Oh, but surely... And heading to the airport. Where's the cash from? Yeah, but someone's Wait. on the plane. Isn't there a hostie saying, um, yeah. are, are hey. you okay? <laughs> It's where? Who are you travelling with? Yeah. Who? Who's picking you up from the airport? What's actually unfolding here? Yeah, I'm just heading to Cooter, mate. Get out of my face. The Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Huey started his first job. It's daunting, very daunting. He's only 14. Hey, what is it? you got to be 14 and nine months to start working in Australia. Oh, wow. do you? And I didn't know that. You it took a, me three years cashy. to realise because we started him working at 11. No, um, what about me? Board. Oh, yeah, I suppose. You're right. How do you get away with that, Kate? No, I don't know. I think the rules were different in the 80s <laughs> for most things. You do anything. Anyway, that's um, so exciting. It, what's the was, job? Do you know what? So he's washing dishes at a cafe. It's called Boy and Bloom, and he's doing a great job. But you know what? He's washing dishes for three hours a shift, right? He's getting 17 bucks an hour. All right. So There's a dish. It's, it's been really good to see. Like, he's dreading going to work sometimes because, oh, yeah, Dad, I've got cuts on my hand from footy, and I've got to go and wash dishes for three hours. But do you know what? You can see the reward in his face afterwards, Kate, mm. when he actually... He goes, okay, oh, well, I've earned over 50 bucks today working a three hour shift. Now, for a 14 year old, that's pretty good. Yeah. So he's trying to work out the best thing as well. He's got his eye on something that he wants to buy. Okay. Have you guys heard of a Ninja Creamy? A Ninja Creamy? Sounds like 13, a donut. 13, 24, 10. Parents, if you've been introduced to the Ninja Creamy. Now, this is a TikTok craze and Ooh. it's really hard to find and buy. What is it? Because majority of them are sold out in Australia. What are you saying? Ninja Creamy or Ninja, Ninja Creamy? Ninja Creamy. Ninja Creamy. Okay. And what it is, it basically... You have to freeze, so you get these little containers. It's like a blender, mm -hmm. but you get these containers that you need to freeze your ingredients in overnight. So you can put mangoes in there. Yeah. You can put chocolate milk in there. You can then put your Oreos in there or whatever you want to do. And then what you do, it's got all these different settings. You've got an ice cream setting, sorbet setting, oh. smoothie it's setting. A it's a blender. So it's like it's, a yo-yo bananas. What, what was it, that? Did you see that? Where you but make... what it does, it's a blender, right? But it blends... So it blends all the way down the tube and then all the way back up. So you can mix stuff in there. You can, what I likened it to with the ice cream, you can mix stuff in there. It's like a cold rock. You know when you go to cold rock and you say, oh, I want some peanut M&Ms in there and you Ugh. can chuck those in there as well. Mm. So anyway, what he's done, he's worked enough to get a Ninja Creamy and he's loving it. How but much are they? 
They're about three hundred dollars. Looks wow. fa- look, looks like a fancy machine. And BJ and I were so proud of him, Kate, that we said, "Do you know what? Your birthday's around the corner." He got to three hundred dollars, mm. and we said to him, "You know what?" You save that money. You've done really, really well and worked hard. We're going to buy you a Ninja Creamy for your birthday and you can save that money. $300. $300. Cashed. So he was was so stoked with that. The thing is, though, Lenny comes in crying the other day. (laughs) Huey's charging me $2 every time I want to use the Ninja Creamy. Is he really? What a clever kid. Awesome. Got him a beauty. Oh, that is so good. And I had to pull Lenny in aside and I go, well, it's his Ninja Creamy, mate. He's got you there. So he's kept the 300 from his dishy job. Yeah. And he's his... getting $2 on the side for anybody he's... that wants to use the Ninja Creamy. And now he's having his mates over in the oh school holidays. He's charging God. them $2 as well. Is he opening and a it's... boost juice store as well? Well, it's worked out really well for the family because I charge him $5 to use my kitchen. Oh, my <laughs> God. This is extraordinary. <laughs> This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I have got a great story about when you have um, received or sent something that shouldn't have gone to that person. Okay. And it's very awkward and we hear these stories all the time. But it, it, it's just worth double checking before you reply all. Okay? I naturally do a reply all. That's the concerning part. I'm always a reply all guy. I'm surprised you haven't been in this kind of trouble. Well, I've never inappropriate, so I don't know why oh, you suggest I should be cancelled. I love to run the gauntlet sometimes. Oh, do you? Write, write the text message as quick as you can. There's a lot of confusion <laughs> as you do it, and then you just send. send. You just send. Shoot it off. And now, okay. Okay. What this guy did initially is... Uh, like mortifying, but his excuse is the way he's tried to talk himself out of it is Great. amazing. All right, this guy, he's he's in the office, and he he has sent. Well, he, he's been sacked. Sorry, right. I'm okay. getting so confused because I'm a bit excited yeah. about the story. He's suing the San Francisco DA's office after losing his job because of an accidental reply all email. Yeah. He's been sacked for six months and he's it's come round and he's thought, well, I've been dismissed. Yeah, and know. it's not fair. And I'm going to talk my way out of this and I want people to hear it. So he, he sent a message to... Um, he asked a married... Oh, my God, I'm getting so confused. This is confused. good. This is good. Because I don't asked know a married which part woman. of the, He's basically done a reply all to the office and has asked a married woman within the office what colour her underpants were. That's not the wording. Well, I don't like that word and I don't panties. use that word. Yeah, panties. What colour her panties were um, before profusely apologising in a follow-up seconds later. Now, those three seconds, I would imagine, between when he realised he'd sent the message. Stressful. Oh, the blood would run from oh, your body, wouldn't well, that's it? That's right. Yes. Okay. He then, he's done it from the work, you know, laptop. It, I mean, everything about it what means that. What colour are your panties? Yeah. And this has been his excuse He was saying, this is what his lawyer is telling the courts, he shouldn't be sacked because he accidentally sent that message to the office and asked the married woman about the colour of her knickers. But what he was actually doing was he was in a text um, conversation with a friend of his who had recently lost his father and to lighten the mood about the death... He just threw out, because they're old school friends, the way they normally talk to each other is... What colour are your panties? Oh, come on. That's not oh, flying. That's not flying. Excuse. Oh, I love it. I, this is, this is um, he, uh, the lawyer, this is the wording. It was purely a text to his friend and it was a, whiz, a whimsical question that was part of the plaintiff's standard jocular repertoire with his friend. Yeah, especially after someone's died. I know any friends of mine that have lost their fathers, I always just fire off what colour are her panties. Yeah, rather than saying um, how, you know, so how sorry are you. Yeah, how are you going? <laughs> what colour are, you? are your undies? I would have gone. Um, <laughs> yeah. or, I would have gone spell checker. I would have gone. Wouldn't it? No, well, that's changed. Yeah, I was asking, you? what colour are your parties? Or could you? Could um, have you gone down another road? I know you've got to think quick because you've sent it out there. You've thought, well, this is my job on the line here. I don't think he thought it through no, too much. No, panties at all. don't rhyme with much either, do they? Um, Ugh, for no, a spell check, no. no they don't. That is that's a really tricky one. Should we speak to Debbie in Dundas? Because I think she's had a very similar um What happened, Debbie? Encounter. 
Um, yeah, I received a text message one weekend, it was actually. I received a text message from a staff member and I opened it up and it was a full frontal nudity taken in <sighs> by a selfie in the mirror, bathroom mirror. Ah. De- Debbie, do you <laughs> were you close to this person? No, 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 no. He's one of my staff. I was his boss. So I just <laughs> sent back a message saying, I really don't think this is an appropriate photo to send to your boss. There was quite a wait between the reply message from him saying, whoop, sorry, wrong person. And I just sent back another text saying, this will never be spoken of again. <laughs> wow. wow. And how much overtime did you give him, Deb? Mm. <laughs> it's in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.